Hello everyone, this is Mike. I'm going to be doing a demonstration on how to get set up with Vassal for Malifaux. Uh, this is going to be assuming that you have the most recent up-to-date Malifaux 3rd edition uh, Vassal module and the compatible version of Vassal. Uh, this will be different at the time of you viewing this video. So first thing to do, double click the module And we open up. For now, I'm going to go to look for game online. I'm not setting up with an actual person though. Finish. First thing to do is to choose a map. So if you're playing online, you can go to new room, type in demo, create, and it will take you automatically to that room. As you can see, I'm the only person in there. Go to File and Encounters. There's quite a lot of encounters that you can choose from. I like Bidenville as a good demonstration map. Uh, immediately it will come up with a window that asks which player I want to be, and I'm going to select player 1. So here's the map. When you lower the view at the top, you get a bit of a better view of the map and mostly where the action is in the centre. But now, first thing we need to do is get some tokens out. So I'm going to go into Objects, drag that out, drag that out, and, and as you can see with the tabs here, we've got Models. I will be playing with Vix, for example. So I'm going to go to Outcasts, Masters, Victoria Chambers, Two Vix, don't have any totems, henchmen. Let's grab a few models here. Obviously that's not my full crew, but this is where we'll start. Next thing I like to do is to go to over to objectives. And I like to pick out the strategies, the scheme markers, and then any other markers that we all need for the game. So assuming that this is a game of uh, corrupted ley lines, I'm going to pull out five markers, which I can either do individually, or I can press Control C to immediately copy a marker. Do the same again, and we have five markers. I can also pull out Scheme Marker for the Outcasts, and if I'm setting up for the opponents, I could drag theirs out as well. Templates and Markers. Some of the ones you want are the Blast Marker and the Shockwave Marker. Most crews will have some kind of access to those. Uh, you will also want Counters, Corpses, and Scrap. Personal preference, I like to set them up on the side here. There's no, re there's no reason you have to do that. Next thing you would do is put in any terrain markers that are unique to your crew. And Victorias do not have any, uh, but let's just say I was up against Titania and we'd want some underbrushes. For example, some underbrush. You can delete any marker by pressing Ctrl D or as you'll find out soon, the right click menu has absolutely every control you can use and it even puts the shortcut for that control. Okay, so assuming that you've set up the markers and the terrain that you want, the next thing to do is to learn how to move the models. I'll just take the hodgepodge emissary here for example. Once I click on the model, a green arrow will appear. I can press left and turn the arrow, I can press right, turn the arrow the other way. When you press forwards, it will move them forwards by one inch in that direction. If you're holding control, you move at half an inch, and if you hold shift, it will move a very small amount. I'm not exactly sure how, how small it does, 
uh, but it's good for those fine uh, minute movements that you might need. Any numbers inside Vassal are controlled by the N and B key. So Hodgepodge Emissary, for example, should he take three damage, I'm going to press B three times. His health goes down to seven. This goes for Soulstones, which you can only control if you are the active player. You can also control your pass tokens and the turn counter. The next thing to learn is conditions. So again, in the right click menu, you can go to status and add or remove any conditions. Just say the hodgepodge emissary is burning, raise it and put burning on number one. If I want to increase the burning further, I can go through the right click menu again, or I can use Q. And as you see, the number goes up. That goes for all of the conditions. Focus, uh, given that the cur at the current time, focus can only go to a maximum of two. If you click more than two, it will go down to a different icon, which is distracted. Uh, distracted and focus are on a scale. So if I want to lower my focus, I will actually just raise the distracted instead. This is the only exception to the rule, otherwise it's raise or lower that condition. Uh, there are additional conditions such as adversary, insignificant, etc. Auras are a very useful tool to use. Uh, one of the unique things in Vassal is that you can just mark one inch from the model, two inch, three inch, and so on. Auras again are inside the right click menu and the hotkeys are next to them. The way you would use these typically uh, would be let's take Taylor and say that she's charging the hodgepodge emissary. Now Taylor has a two inch engagement on her relic hammer. So the way I would charge this emissary if I'm trying to keep my distance is to put a two inch aura on the emissary. Taylor I know has a five inch movement so she can go one two three four five She's within the aura, so she can attack from there, but I could instead go to four inches, go on the outside. Alternatively, I could put an aura up on her, say there's her movement of five inches, click and drag, and I can be a bit more precise with where exactly where I want her to be. The other way to do this is by marking charge lanes. For example, I can right click Taylor, go to rotate, and go through the charge lane. Now if you cycle through the charge lanes, you'll go from 30mm, 40mm, 50mm, and then it will turn them off again. You can also do Alt and C, turn that on, and go through a bit faster. Now I can see exactly where Taylor can charge. I can even combine that with an aura, and I can see where she can charge from here. I can be a bit more specific as well by pressing Alt and V to rotate freely. And by clicking that, my cursor changes. I can click and drag, and I can put that down exactly where I want it. The final essential piece for Vassal is the cards. I'm gonna open the card menus, and the way I like to set them up is to drag them to the sides, and zoom out twice. This gives me a good view of both players' hands so I know exactly how many cards each player has. To use the cards, most of the controls are in the right click menu. So I can shuffle as many times as I want. I can also draw multiple cards for a hand of six. Drag them out. Now when I double click the stack, it unstacks them so I can control each card individually. Otherwise, if they are stuck together like this, they do move around as one unit. You can also drag the cards out individually and you'll see a little hidden, uh, hidden token on the side. 
uh, that tells you that the opponent cannot see the card. If I want to unflip, if I want to flip a card over so that they can see it, I can press Control F, or I can go to the right-click menu and click Flip, and now that hidden marker goes away, and the opponent can see that card. Whenever you move a card into the discard pile, it will automatically flip it. Same with the remove from play. If you want to find a specific card in your discard pile, you can draw specific cards from there. Brings up a menu, tells you exactly which card. Select, goes to the top, you can drag it out. Finally, at the end of turn, when you want to send the entire discard pile to the fate deck to the fate deck, click there and you reshuffle manually. When flipping cards, at the top of your hand is straight flip, flip two cards, three cards, four cards. We'll automatically flip them so that there's not hidden and the opponent can see them. So if you're flipping on a negative, you can flip two cards and choose the lowest. The lowest will go on top in the discard pile. Important thing about the opponent's deck, if you pull out the card, it will come out as saying hidden, but the opponent can see it. Uh, but also you can see it. If the opponent pulls that card out, you will not be able to see what is on there. It will come out as just the back decoration. You also cannot do straight flips or any of the other types of flips from the buttons at the top for your opponent's deck. If I go over to here, player two to switch sides, as you can see, I can no longer see that hand. I can draw my cards, which come out this way because I haven't shuffled them. I can flip this many cards as I want, drag them to the discard pile, switch back, and again, I can only see my own hand. And that's all for this demonstration video of Vassal. Uh, the next video I want to produce will be a full demo game between myself and another player.